Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor and Amber Heard and her attorney Elaine are officially caught lying again in a court of law and we are going to break it down for you. We're also going to correct something from over the weekend. So happy to have Christopher Melcher back. Hey Christopher, first of all, let me just clarify. We taped our videos this weekend on Saturday morning just so I could have the weekend off with my family. Saturday late afternoon and then Sunday more information came out about the insurance agencies that Christopher and I were unaware of. We are going to break down this correction for you because it's a very revealing correction because it reveals that we, while we were debating, you know, yesterday, Christopher, who's this benefactor? Who's paying for Elaine? Who paid for these things? Well, we just found out, right? There's a second uh, insurance agency that has entered the chat, Travelers Insurance. I guess that's the, wo the woman who was in the courtroom was representing Travelers, who has admitted they paid $5 million defending the insurer, and in fact admitted that they covered uh, their independent counsel. So can you clarify how this changes the story, Christopher? Sure. So, uh, and I'm grateful to Laura B for pointing this out because um, there's two insurance policies and that's what, what we were missing when we had the discussion in the earlier video. So uh, we know that there uh, is a policy issued by New York Marine Insurance that uh, covers defamation. And we also see now that there is a traveler's insurance policy for Amber that also covers defamation. So she has two policies of insurance that both defend against this claim. And the one that we had talked about in the earlier video was the lawsuit by New York Marine Insurance against Amber, where New York Marine said, look, we have a million dollars in coverage. We're not paying it to Johnny as she's demanding that they do because insurance doesn't cover intentional willful acts and this was willful. So we're not paying the million dollars and we are not responsible for any of the attorney's fees that you spent or incurred in defending yourself against the Johnny Depp lawsuit because uh, New York Marine offered a attorney for Amber Heard to defend her, this really good law firm called Cameron McAvoy in Fairfax. And Amber said, no, I won't work with them. I want Elaine. And New York Marine said, well, we're not paying for you to pick your own counsel. Well, we've selected really good counsel. You need to use them or we're not paying at all. So that's the New York Marine versus Amber lawsuit. There is a separate lawsuit. Travelers Insurance sued New York Marine um, saying, hey, Travelers allowed Amber Heard to pick her own counsel. So at first, Amber Heard picked Roberta Kaplan, who has had s a, some controversy mm -hmm. and got rid of Roberta Kaplan, and then picked Elaine. And Travelers foot the bill for that, which we're going to talk about. Uh, and Travelers said, hey, New York Marine, you also cover uh, Amber. You have a duty to defend her. We want you to pay half of Elaine's bill. New York Marine saying, no, we're not paying for Elaine. We'll pay for Cameron McAvoy. And that's what the fight is over there. So the correction, uh, again, thank you to Laura B. And um, I don't like tweeting or saying anything unless I've done all that research. I just didn't know about that other one. So I apologize for not having it correct on that. But we did solve now or know the mystery, which is who is paying for all these attorney's fees? We absolutely know because what you have there on the screen, Andy, is an admission in the travelers versus New York Marine lawsuit that Travelers Insurance paid in excess of five million dollars in in, in uh, attorneys' fees to Elaine and other lawyers to defend Amber Heard. Because this court, this trial started ages ago. All that prep, all the questioning, all the depositions cost a fortune, guys. And so, although a lot of those uh, expenses would have been done prior, which is when this debate between insurance uh, agencies happened. Now, it's important to, to show you this because twofold. Let's go to, let's go to the tape. Uh, thank you to Andrea Burkhart for putting this out there. Uh, she does a great breakdown as well if you want to go watch her video of discovering this lies. It's sort of where I al was alerted to a lot of this myself. But here's Elaine confirming things At the end of the day she's made a million dollars in pledge in payments to them but then she got sued here and hasn't been able to because she spent six million dollars in attorney's fees that is unrefuted she still intends to pay those pledges honor those pledges now now she clarifies but again here's amber as well didn't donate it's a yes or no i haven't been able to obligate i mean to fulfill those so that's a no right miss heard I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't <sighs> been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. 
And have you completely fulfilled your donations to the ACLU and the uh, Children's Hospital? I have not yet. And why not? Because Johnny sued me for $50 million in March of 2019. And I have spent over $6 million. Objection, Your Honor. This is a motion in limine. And so this is interesting because obviously right there we heard Christopher that Elaine said the six million earlier about the attorney's fees. Amber's clearly about to say it. Camille weirdly cut her off, which I wish she almost had it in a way because it does feel like she's about to perjure herself because I assume both, you know, Elaine knows who's paying her and she has to, right? And then I assume Camille and team must know there's some sort of insurance agency there who's paying things. I mean, these are two really revealing now perjurous moments from both Elaine and Amber. W what is your reaction? Sure. So um, normally we do not allow uh, any mention of insurance in a jury trial out of fear that the jury would get confused or think like, wow, if there's insurance, maybe I'll maybe I'll award Johnny more damages because the insurance company is going to cut this check and I don't have to worry about whether Amber can afford it or not. So what would have normally happened is Elaine would have gone into court before the trial started, filed what's called a motion in limine, which is a motion to limit um, or sometimes admit evidence in advance. And they would have argued over this and Elaine would have said, hey, I don't want any mention of insurance at this trial for this very reason. That's a standard motion. And uh, Camille or Johnny's lawyers probably argued back saying, okay, that's fine, but Amber can't then say I paid $6 million in attorney's fees because it was the insurance who paid it. And so that would have been the trade-off. I don't know the ruling on that, but that's typically how that would shake out. But then um, here we see Amber and Elaine opening that door and saying like, oh yeah, the, uh, there were $6 million in, in fees that had to be paid. That's why I couldn't make the rest of the uh, donations of $6 million to the uh, Children's Hospital and ACLU. So Camille had objected to basically like, hey, you can't have it both ways. If you're gonna open this door, then I get to talk about the insurance and show the lie. And there was probably some sidebar there and the court would typically be like, hey, move on don't open this other world of insurance the trials taking long enough we don't want to confuse or waste time so that's probably how it shook shook out but they got the information in very quickly we now know it's false so i mean this seems very i mean we've talked about this can elaine or any of them actually get caught with perjury like it just seems like it's getting worse and worse the court's looking dumber and dumber like at a certain point can either elaine or amber actually be held responsible for these lies that they were peddling in this court of law i mean this is pretty this is a pretty damning one no yeah so there is there is kind of a legal fiction at least in california cases i don't know virginia but in california cases like you you could sometimes say like like you know hey say you you got into an accident and you had medical bills and your insurance company paid the medical bills and now you have a trial relating to that accident you know you you can in california tell the jury like hey i had medical bills i want you know recovery for these things and the theory is is that the insurance is something you paid for it's for your benefit not for this person who injured you so as a legal fiction you could say i have medical bills that I want paid. Now, um, but, uh, you know, in Virginia, I don't know if that's the rule. And certainly if it is like California, you, you can't, you can't just pile onto it. It's just saying, Hey, I have legal fees. I'm concerned about fees or something like that. Very general that maybe could be mentioned, but here she definitely opened the door because she didn't just say, express concern about, wow, I'm being sued for 50 million, I could lose everything. She went one step further and used it as an excuse or explanation as to why she couldn't pay these charities. So she went way beyond any, and, and these protections about not mentioning insurance are for Amber's benefit. Um, so she could waive that protection by talking about it. So again, I think, she acted improperly. She got the information out there. Elaine exploited it. It's untruthful. Um, but, you know, fortunately, it didn't affect the outcome of the case. I mean, it, it, the jury didn't 
believe any of this. But can Elaine get like disbarred for something like this? I mean, it feels like she's really purposely, you know, misleading the jury, the testimony. Like, as I've seen in threads that Laura B's even put out there, like the Bar Association has, you know, pretty strict you know, rules on things. And it seems like they aren't, you know, can, can they do something about this? Well, I mean, it, it's we have not seen you know, much um, action by bar associations against lawyers. And again, it's like the, the bar association would have to go through all of this testimony, the objections, all of this stuff and figure it out. But um, I, I don't I don't put put much stock in 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 that happening just because we don't see a lot of accountability for lawyers. And, um, but yeah, you got to be truthful. I mean, that's, that's Which uh, she's, this AB. Yeah. yeah. Was, just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Was just, she just was, isn't, but you're saying even with these ABA rules, the, the reality of actually enforcing these rules is not going to be, it's not what we want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not, I mean, the ABA is a model rule and the one in Virginia would apply, but it, I'm sure it's very similar to that rule, the model rule, but yeah, you got to be honest. Um, but we know people aren't honest and, uh, and most people get away with it, but you know, uh, again, I, I don't, I'm not trying to minimize it, but I'm also like, no, there's not going to be any bar action over that because it just doesn't happen very often. So again, it's just more evidence for all of us to have armed of just everyone who keeps trying to say this was a sham. The only sham is it's constantly unfolding is Elaine and Amber and their constant lies on the stand. Now, another thing we wanted to bring up that I know I, I, uh, Laura B was looking into this and you were looking into it as well. Like what, what could these insurance policies have been started around the time of the op-ed almost on purpose like could there have been even more nefarious reasons and protection being made uh, i know we wanted to talk about this too what, what are your thoughts on this i know there was some research here thanks to laura b and others to break this down yeah so there have been a lot of questions here about or speculation on on like why does she have all this insurance number one um at the time it didn't appear that she owned a home she bought that one in the desert looks like afterwards so why did she have all this insurance was uh, was it just because she wanted to protect herself or was it because she knew that she was going to do this op ed and get sued for it and want to turn it over to the insurance as she did and get them to pay all this money to defend her. So when you look at these policies, um, they're issued annually. So there's the New York Marine policy that was issued, I think, maybe in July or something like that of 2018. And then the um, the travelers like in November 14, 2018. And um, from the we know that from the lawsuits that these companies filed. Now, those policies are issued annually, so they only stated the annual term that was in effect when the claim was made. And they didn't say whether there was insurance before. So for all we know, Amber might have had coverage for years with mm -hmm. these companies. We just don't know that or I don't know that at the moment. But if she did just go out and procure those, you know, it does raise some questions. Now, in that big um, uh, email exchange that's around the yellow, that's November 6, 2018. It's an ACLU lawyer, Jerry Johnson, that's suggesting to Jody Gottlieb, the publicist for Amber Heard, about doing the op-ed. So uh, Laura B. said this was the first reference that she could find in the emails that were produced. Uh, of, and thanks to Bex, I think, found this one also to send it to oh, Laura okay. B. Yeah, but thanks to both. Okay, keep going. So this is the first reference. Well, that's a week before she gets the um, other policy. Now, you know, again, I, I don't want to speculate on stuff. This does take time to get insurance. It's not like you just call to get insurance and you get it the same day. You know, you, you got to go through a process. So for the policy to be issued on November 14th, the week after this email, I got to think that that was in the works before the idea of doing the op-ed was stated. So we got to, you know, kind of keep that in mind that, you know, if you've ever gotten insurance, you, you, you sometimes can get it the same day, but a lot of times it's, it's a bit of a process application. But at, at the same time, I mean, it can be time for sometime after 1114 is the dates here. They're sort of saying, even though this was written the six and then like you said, she gets the homeowner policy in 1114. There's potential something could have happened screwy there, but yeah, she would have had to probably start that conversation on the 6th 
and ensure that her policy was enacted by the 14th. I don't know if anybody else knows insurance better than us, but is that enough time to have potentially, you know, locked in a proper insurance agency? I mean, it didn't take me that long, Christopher, <laughs> when I got a home. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. not it's not unlikely. I think there's a you know, you have a it actually you have a 30 or 20 days for like the lot the rates to lock for your mortgage and stuff. So I can't imagine it's not, not that difficult and you do your call in and, and compare. So I defer to yeah. you guys. Obviously, we're not insurance experts here, so who knows? But it is an interesting theory as we go through the dates that Laura has compiled when she uh, got her, her, her liability policy was earlier, but the huge homeowner policy, which is covering a lot of this, um, was actually around the similar time. But again, Chris might be right. It's might, maybe not enough time, but interestingly enough close together where it could have been no yeah yeah it, it's it's coincidence you know and we, we we just don't know um but the thing is is that uh these insurance companies definitely would have an interest in looking into that right. and so if there was any attempt to get insurance knowing that a claim was going to be made uh, she most likely would have had to disclose that to the insurance company so they could exclude that from coverage. So, like, well, just, just you know. sorry to interrupt, but it's like, so if she's like, I'm, I'm about to write a potentially defamatory <clears throat> uh, piece <laughs> in an op-ed, which she got lawyers to even go through, they were on the stand. Is that something that the insurance agency can be like, well, wait a second, you should have alerted us before you did this. Yeah, it depends on the insurance application and, you know, what statements were made there. It were, you know, because sometimes on the insurance application, it, it would ask, like, do you know, uh, you know, are there any pending claims against you or do you know that claims are going to be made that haven't, you know, been basically disclosed yet? So it would all depend on the application process. That, that's going to be very hard to prove, um, you know, like insurance fraud, basically. But you know, hey, the, the dates do look a little strange, but we don't know the whole picture. So if she had this insurance from 2017 and it just renewed, you know, in 2018, well, there's nothing suspicious about it. And I just don't know that. Uh, I don't know that fact. But what we do know is that she is caught lying yet again in 4K is what we call it. Full HD is what that means, guys. Uh, her and Elaine were peddling this narrative the whole, whole way. And, and like you said, Christopher, using it to keep the lie going about donating to charity pledging to charity my god it's just sickening to know this uh but there you go that's the caught make sure you support christopher over on twitter as well any final words christopher yeah i mean it's it's this story like we we want to move on or at least i want to move on to other stories this thing keeps coming back and and it's because i mean here you're seeing a lie about a lie and so it's it's hard not to like talk about this but um you know we definitely are looking at other stories and trying to develop stuff too and to be clear i also just want to correct it because some people were already looping us in like oh we, and it was our our bad of just trying to trying to take a weekend off is my fault it happens this, this <clears throat> amber's team just keeps throwing stuff at us uh but now you have the full story uh, think of what you will let us know in the comments down below make sure you also hit that subscribe button hit the bell for all alerts so you actually get notified smash the like button and leave a comment down below and yes, I want to pivot to some more stories as well. We'll touch upon this and more today in our live, which will probably be around between 1.30, 2 o'clock p.m. is my guess. Uh, probably closer to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, knowing me. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. We'll be live the rest of the week. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you, Christopher Melcher. Again, see him over on Twitter at CA underscore divorce. We'll have him back soon with lots more here on Popcorn Planet.